What is the explanation of how we acquired these crafts? There's crash retrieval, but then there's also ones that are intact. Remember, Lazar said that uh, nearly all of the ones that he saw, except for one that had a big hole in the middle of it, all looked intact. It was as if they were dug up at ar archaeological sites or there were gifts, like throwing a, a cell phone into a chimpanzee cage. Here you go, crazy humans, knock yourself out. Let's see how you do with this. That they're just left there for us to find and as a challenge to us, I guess. Yeah, I, I have the same problem as you. Like, I'm yeah. like, these motherfuckers not crashing. If they're coming from somewhere else, they're not crashing. Right. Um, but people will say to me, look, man, um, you know, we have air plane problems and sometimes even planes crash and maybe there's other circumstances where these things could have crashed because they were hit with some technology maybe two of them were dog fighting electrical storms i don't know yeah. i don't know that I was the virginia brazil story right yeah. it was right an electrical storm and also so the, radar some people suspect that really powerful radar can it can interfere right because some of the radars are also weaponry that's the thing like um you can have energy uh, reception, but also output on something. So there's some cool devices that actually shoot like high high w laser weaponry. But the, the, my thing is, I don't know if they really crashed. George is kind of edging towards maybe archaeological digs, maybe gifts. The Lazar said that one of them supposedly was from an archaeological dig, right? Yeah. Do yeah. they know where? Not that I know of. He Does was, he know? No, he was just literally, that's one of the many things that they tried to impose upon him. But remember, they tried to impose a lot of shit on Lazar. He is so succinct with, this is what I know to be real. I had hands on this. Now, they told him a whole bunch of crazy shit. You like know what? Dude, just the quick, like, I should put that shit out. I'm mean, just crazy. Like, we, are, we are viewed by the aliens as containers of souls. I mean, you're not going to tell a guy working on propulsion that. So he had he had a, he was able to sit down for a brief time and go through a document, like a huge briefing document. In there, he saw what were, they said were was a bio, biological biopsy of an alien. Like he, he was just he didn't care. He was going to the propulsion part, mm -hmm. but they told him so much wild stuff. He's like, this has to be a joke. But then when he, he said he differentiates, he goes, but when I, you can't fake. He said what I saw. You can't fake your hands trying to get close to the reactor and not being able to touch it. You can't fake something that big lifting like that. So he says, I know for sure what I worked on was not from here, but he goes, everything else they told me, it was words on paper. And I respect mm. that about him. And maybe they wanted him to leak it to John Lear. Remember he's like friends with this guy, John Lear, who's like, already on their radar. The best photo of Area 51 from lake level ever was 1977, the year I was born. John Lear's kicking it out there, stirring up shit at Area 51, taking photos. So he does a whole panoramic of photos of Area 51, sees a truck coming from a distance, being John Lear, takes the roll, puts it under his ashtray, puts in new film, snaps it again, they confiscate his, his film. But he had some underneath his cigarette lighter, or whatever. And he actually gave those to me. So I got the, the best shot of Area 51 you'll ever see from lake level was by John Lear. Now, Bob knew John. That's where all the conspiracies come in because John's like this UFO nut, the godfather of conspiracy. But when... How does Bob meet John? Well, this is your turf. Yeah. Through a guy named Gene Huff, who this was is a... post-exposure, post... post uh, he, he met him before he worked out there. Really? Uh, there was a guy named Gene Huff who did a real estate appraisal for uh, John Lear's house. And uh, Gene was friends with Bob. And they, Gene and uh, Lear struck up a conversation, brought Bob into the, to meet him. And um, it was only after that that Lazar got hired out there. He would have arguments with Lear about this crazy UFO stuff because I'd already done a couple of interview, interviews with him in the, in the late 80s. With Lear. With right. Lear, before I met Lazar. So Lazar was not a believer. He said, I don't believe it. Poor John, he's crazy with this UFO stuff. So this is fact, and it's so funny, like knowing all these guys, because I wasn't there like he was, but I get to talk with everybody and grill them. The, what, I think it was Jim Goodall that was in the car with him. He remembers Bob saying, oh, poor John Lear. And Jim Goodall is like, why? And he's like, because he believes this UFO nonsense. So that was where Lazar was at prior to getting the job out at the test site. Is mm. he didn't believe any of this nonsense. In fact, so much so that remember, I think he told you when he first went in, 
they had a little decal of an American flag on the saucer, and he thought, oh, those idiots, everybody thought UFOs were from outer space and they're ours, you know? Right. And, and then he quickly realized, wait a second, that, mm. you know, th this isn't, this can't be ours. It's fascinating to see now that Dave Grush has come forward and give some credence to, we have reverse engineering programs, we have a crash retrieval program, aerospace companies are stashing this stuff in some hangar somewhere, all the stuff that Lazar had said is being true, they now say, oh, gosh, I guess it is true. But that Lazar, he's still a liar. We don't believe him. You know, yeah. you have to kind of do some mental gymnastics to do that. Yeah. It's just fascinating when you see these crafts move exactly the way that he described them in 1989. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. It's pretty wild because you're seeing footage from, like, what is it, 2014 or something yeah, like that? Yeah, the gimbal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like okay, it moved exactly like he described. Turns on its side, shoots off. So, so that's a, a common thing is Bob Lazar must be the luckiest con man on planet Earth to get so much shit right over yeah. all these years. What's that? What's the controlled disclosure campaign plan? It's what listed, is this from, Jim? <coughs> this is listed at the bottom of that document. They're talking about the, uh, the NDAA for 2024, and this is the UAP section I've Whoa. been reading through. Controlled disclosure campaign with respect to unidentified anomalous phenomena recorded uh, records originated prior to review board termination. It's this review board, I'm not sure what this is. It talks about all the, like they get all of this information and you better give it to them as sort of what it's. They want to set up a review board that would basically declassify stuff that they come across. Yeah, uh, but I'm being told by people involved that that's not good enough. Like this is one step, which is to get this um, presidential review board and you get a bunch of sociologists and scientists and some Nobel Prize winners and, and you look at what can be declassified for the American public in a controlled way. And that's really nice they're doing it. But everybody on the inside that I know is like, we need a church style committee. It's not okay to just have a disclosure panel. You need oversight. And to get that oversight, we need access. The only way that we're going to get that is by forcing sen – like, where's, where are all the senators in all this? We did this hearing with all these Congress people. Where are all the senators listening to the public being like, okay, I'm going to get after that? They're the only ones with the power to create a church-style committee. Where are the senators right now? And, and so – that's really, this language is so important. I hope people go look it up and they read it because it's just astonishing when you hear what they're actually doing. And I think it's a good step. I find this one a little weird too. The ex exercise of eminent domain. Yeah. They can go and take anything from yeah. anyone who's got anything. Yeah. yeah. 